My name is Tiggs Chiriga, and I live in Mooresville, North Carolina, with my wife, Diana, and my four-year-old daughter, and I got another baby on the way. Go, go. I came to the States uh, all the way from Zimbabwe 14 years ago. Uh, I earned a basketball scholarship, and I faced a lot of challenges, but ultimately, I worked my way to an MBA. Right now, I'm a clerk at the post office, but I realize there's something greater out there for me, and that's why I'm following my dream and starting my business. I did a fantastic job launching my product, but now that everybody's interested, I don't have the capital or the inventory to meet the demand. The success of my product means a better future for my family, and I know that deal with the sharks can make that happen. My name is Tiggs. I live in Mooresville, North Carolina, and I'm the founder of the Floating Mug Company. I'm seeking $75,000 in exchange for 15% ownership in my business. This, quite simply, it's the sexiest mug you'll ever lay your eyes on. <laughs> of course, Kevin, your mug is a close second. <laughs> I'm not a professional designer, but I had a screeching problem, and I needed a solution. You see, my wife makes a very particular sound, and if you'll let me, I'm gonna try and reproduce that sound for you. Go something like this. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. That's not a mating call. That's the sound my wife makes every time she discovers a coffee stain on our furniture. When I'm distracted, I don't have the mental capacity to search for a coaster just to put my cup down. So the inevitable happens. The coffee stain magically appears under my cup. And within minutes, <laughs> I knew at that moment I was a dead man walking. But there's good news. I no longer have to listen to that deathly sound. The floating mug is the ultimate marriage between a mug and a coaster, and together it's the perfect, elegant solution. I brought some samples for you guys. I've got these in special colors. That's adrenaline white. Ooh. This is hero white. That's a perpetual white. <laughs> Hey, my man, Tig, that's yes, awesome. And final white, and this is home team white. There you go. <laughs> does the bottom break off a lot? How does this hold up over time? Well, this is a very well-made product. Is there a piece of metal in here? No, this is all porcelain. The whole thing? The whole thing is porcelain. How are you selling them now, and what are your sales? Um, so if I give you some context, I started, I launched this it's on It's never a... good when it's not a number. Right, yeah. Our first year sales was 105,000. That's not That's bad. That's great. Not bad. That's not bad at all. Who did you sell them to? Our biggest customer was a distributor that we got in touch with. So give us the numbers, Tiggs. What does it cost to make it? What do you sell it for? Where do you sell it? All right. And so where do you manufacture it? Originally, we started manufacturing in the Czech Republic, but it cost me $12 to land this from the Czech Republic. And we Individually? Was individual months. So what do you sell it for? So right now, we've been selling it for $29.99. We don't have the right price, but we found a really great Italian-based manufacturer who's working with us to now start producing this in China. So we've gone from a $12 landed to now we're at $4 landed. Takes. I actually used to be in, in the glass business way, way, way back when. What we learned about that business was you have to buy in massive quantity because of the price points. For it to get down to $4, what quantity do you need to buy? So our order quantity is 19,500 units. Wow. What was the retail price going to be? 1999. Here's what I'm worried about. The volume my, my option Explain is when I go to a though. store, I can buy a porcelain mug of relatively similar quality from somewhere between six and nine bucks. Now, I can also get a coaster for about 80 cents. So would the average consumer pay 100% premium for the floating mug? And I don't know the answer to that, and certainly you haven't proven it in the market yet. So my, my response to that, Kevin, um, you could say that for anything. At what point does a $10 pair of sunglasses become a $200 pair of sunglasses? When it's really, really special. Is this special enough? This is just a product. What I want you to focus on is the concept. This is our proof of concept for beverage products that have integrated coaster functionality. Like? Well, I would like to show you a prototype I'm working on. So just to give you an idea, that's a drinking glass. 
What's the benefit? It's a built-in coaster. So as it sweats, everything gets caught in that reservoir, and it's got a wall, so as you drink, it's not going to spill on you. Do you have a patent on it? On the glass, it's pending. On this, it's, it's issued. When markets close at 4 o'clock in New York, I always have vodka and lemonade with lots of ice in a tall glass. The problem with it is it sweats like crazy because it has a lot of ice, causes condensation on my right. desk. Right. Now, that's a problem. I would be willing to pay a premium to solve that problem, knowing I have to face it with certainty every day. Kevin, while this might be a niche product, this gives me credibility, shows you that I can deliver a world-class product. Take the downside is you're always going to be competing with a standard mug and, and a 50, 80 cent coaster. It's not a task I want to try and do because I don't think I'm going to make any money. Oh, doing Kevin, it. before you keep talking, yeah. there's nothing you can do to stop me. I have to make decisions as an investor every day in the Shark Tank. Okay. I look for the path of least resistance for the highest returns because I'm the only disciplined investor here. Maybe you can get an emotional connection going with Barbara, who loves to spend money when she starts to cry. I don't know if that's going to happen. But for me, this isn't going to work. I'm out. So here's my concern with it. I think the market for people that are going to pay a premium for something that doesn't leave a coffee stain is me, Kevin, maybe, and a couple other people. But I don't see it as a wide, acceptable product. that will drive your price points down. For that reason, I'm out. Tiggs! <laughs> <laughs> you obviously have a high motor. Yeah. And you grind. My challenge is that the high motor approach to this would have been on the web. Pounding it through a website and selling 1,000 makes you $17,000. Selling 5,000 makes you 85,000. In my mind, the strategy was wrong. You should have taken the high motor approach with the web because you can control your own destiny there. Because you didn't, for that reason, I'm out. OK. Barbara, I need you here. You know, I think this item is a one-time purchase. And I think it's a gift item. I don't envision someone buying a set of six. Okay. I hope I'm wrong, because I really like you. Sadly, I'm out. Okay. One Sharkette left. So for me, looking at this, I think it should be a lower price point because I think it makes your job easier if more people can afford it. To me, high end for this is like $8.99, $9.99 max. This is the one that I think is really clever. I don't like the silicone band. It seems to me that if you could take this and have it all one integrated blown piece so that your catch here is made out of glass, all integrated as one, so it'll still look sleek and beautiful, to me, this is your hero. This is the money. I think because you have a lot of studying to do and figuring this out, you're not ready yet. So I'm out. All right. Good luck, Tiggs. Good luck, Tiggs. I just want to do better, you know? When you get an opportunity like that, you don't capitalize on it, but it hurts. Uh, but it's just going to motivate me to do better. Wait, you're not subscribed to the Shark Tank YouTube channel? Well then, for that reason, I'm out.